Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Erste Session des Happy Bad European Darts Grand Prix 2016. Und wir starten mit einem Mann aus England. Er hat sich zum allerersten Mal für die European Tour qualifizieren können, ist seit 2014 bei der PDC, vor allem aber auf der Challenge Tour unterwegs. Die aktuelle Nummer 131 der Welt. Herzlich willkommen dem Governor Jay Foreman. Der Gegner von Jay Foreman trat wohl auch für den deutschen Zuschauer zum ersten Mal am 29. November des vergangenen Jahres in den Mittelpunkt. Denn damals spielte er das Finale bei den World Youth Championship und verlor es knapp mit 5 zu 6 gegen Max Hopp. Einer, der seit vielen Jahren bei der PDC am Start ist. Er ist aktuell die Nummer 71 der Welt. Auch ihn begrüßen wir herzlich aus Stockport. The Asp, Nathan Aspino. Für das gesamte Turnier gilt die Matchdistanz von Best of 11 Legs. Man braucht also sechs Legs, um die nächste Runde einzuziehen. Und der Caller dieser ersten Partie ist der Papi George Noble. Welcome to Sindelfingen and the Glass Palast here in Germany for the Happy Bet European Darts Grand Prix. Three more days of action on the European Tour, the penultimate European Tour event of 2016 as these guys battle it out for a place at the European Championship in Hasselt in Belgium. This is the third in our triple header, three consecutive weekends of Euro Tour action. We've seen Mensor Suljevic win one. We've seen Michael Van Gogh in return from injury to win one. Will we see MVG continue his dominance on the Euro Tour? Will we see a new winner here this weekend? And the big, big factor that's thrown into the mix is the arrival of the five-time world champion Raymond van Barneveld, who made it through the qualifiers last night. Didn't make it through the qualifiers for the last one, so this is the only European Tour event he will play in 2016. If he's going to be at the European Championship, he's got to go all the way to the final. First and you'll see him. You throw first. Game on. You will see Roman van Barneveld later on this afternoon, the eighth game of the afternoon session against Scott Dale. But we start off the tournament with Nathan Aspinall against Jay Foreman. I'm Dan Dawson. 16. And for all your European darts stadium trivia needs, Robert Malarkey is alongside me. You build that last time. I never actually got round to it in recent years. Yeah, it? it'll happen. It's inevitable. And I missed Mulheim, of course. So uh, back 16. here at the uh, Glass Palace. That will come. But as you say, September's been an absolute blur so far as darts is concerned. So much more to come as well. Oh, they are looking to set the tone for what should be and what I fully expect to be another brilliant weekend of European Tour action. As you say, so many talking points oh, over the first two weekends of September. Risa was tremendous. I followed Mulheim as best I could on the various portals and various ways and means last weekend. When not here 100. in Germany. Yeah, tough being a part-time darts commentator, isn't it? It is, yeah, because you've still got to do all the homework <laughs> and, keep, and, and keep on top of things. Oh, woe is you. Whilst you have a day at the races in Ireland. <laughs> 134. Well, this opening game sees Nathan Aspinall, World Youth finalist, of course. 25-year-old from Stockport, taking on Jay Foreman, who we've only seen on the 97. European Tour once before. A couple of years ago in Dusseldorf, and Aspinall's left himself the 167, now for treble 19. Go back up to the 20s. Yeah, good start. Sets it up very nicely. Foreman looking at a ton plus finish to hold his throw in the opening leg with a 15 data. Another one? Well, staying there for the treble with a left double 16. 56. Nathan, you require 28. The men's shot in the first leg. Nathan Aspinall. Taken out by Nathan Aspinall. He leads by one Second leg. leg Nathan, he has the early first. leg as well. Game on. As Dan said, he reached the final of the World Youth Championship last November. It was played over the weekend of the Players' Championship finals in Minot. He lost, of course, to Max Hopp in that one. Still picked up £5,000 for his trouble. 61. But he's only playing in his fourth European Tour event and only his second since making the final in Minehead at the end of last year. He uh, also made it to Munich this year. And a 180 to boot as well for Foreman. Nope, just outside, sorry. Yeah, made it to the first round in uh, Germany in Munich earlier this year. Lost to Devin Peterson 6-5. 80. 
but has failed to qualify for all of the others this year so far. Beat Mark Webster in qualifying, did Aspinall. And he overcame Ryan Harrington as well, 62 in his second match. I was a little bit confused by that opening shot from Jay Fong. I was trying to figure out. I, I, I thought it might have been a one eight myself. Then I thought, oh, it's a 140. It was only 120 scored, it would appear. That other one must have fallen on the floor, completely out of my vision. But Fair enough. We will crack on. These two find out for a place in the second round, which will be tomorrow when all the seeded players join the action. That's the likes of Michael Van Gerwen. And we've had a couple of withdrawals this weekend. One, Daryl Gurney, ongoing problem with his hand. Ruled him out last weekend. Oh, hang about, though. Jay Foreman, another one of those. Ooh, well, he'll stay there to try and leave double eight. 140. Aspen had to go at the 167 and hit the treble 21st dart last time. Now he's got the 170, but that's not where he wanted it. Good setup, but Foreman looking to hit back with a 13 darter, having been broken with a 13 darter in the opening leg. Double eight. Double four. And there it is. 14 darter. Yeah, you were mentioning Daryl Gurney pulling out with the Third leg J and wrist robust. injury that he picked up Game prior on. to Risa. He missed Risa, missed Mulheim, of course. The danger is now that it could really tarnish the rest of his season. I mean, there are one or two concerns that he might not be able to play in the European Championship itself. He's 59. seeded, by the way, for Hildesheim at the end of, uh, or in mid-October, um, given the progress he's made and the climb of the Pro Tour order of merit that he's had. I think he was also helped by James Wade's withdrawal in Hildesheim as well. He's not involved next weekend. Oh, next month is James Wade. So, anyway, Gurney would have been seeded for that. Might still be if he can make it, if the cast comes off. But, yeah, like I say, real concern. I mean, the immediate concern will be the Grand Prix, of course, in Ireland. And we don't know the full extent. I, as I'm led to believe, Daryl Gurney's meeting doctors today. He may have already met them this morning. And they'll have a, a better idea of how serious this hand injury is. But, you know, the last 12 months of Dowell Gurney have been a real breakthrough for him. If 58. it is a serious problem, then he may be better off just uh, taking some time away from it. You don't want to do any lasting damage. Because he's a lad with a, a big future in the game, it would seem. Tell you what, Nathan Aspinall could have a serious future in the game. You don't make a World Youth Final without having some serious talent. He does have a weird sort of little hop as he throws the dart, but he seems to be able to 43. repeat that action. And it doesn't seem to affect his consistency. 100. Level ton there, and he's threatening to break Foreman for a second time and go 2 1 up. Not had a hold of throw in this game so far. Foreman needs another to get down to a finish, and he doesn't get it, so aspinall has got six starts from 147 for a 2-1 lead. And after the conclusion of this third leg, we'll have some breaking news for you. You, oh. were, you were prolific at the breaking news in Risa. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Uh, we've got a little bit more for you as well. Absolute tease. Well, we may not have to wait very long. Yeah, just to clear up, uh, Chizzy was the other one we saw withdraw, so that was a, a neck injury, we led to believe. And news of another withdrawal. That's the, that is the breaking news that we have for you. Bizarre circumstances as well. Let's see how this fares out for Aspinall. 50. Well, he's left himself double top. Yeah, Foreman is looking at 136. Treble 20, treble 20, double 8. Not going to happen. So Aspinall. 100. Oh, three darts. Looking at tops for a 2 1 lead. And another break of throw. Double 10. Still double ten. Move to the left. Thirty. Missed opportunity. Oh, you require thirty-six. So for the first hold of throw in this opening match of the afternoon session, day one of the European Darts Grand Prix. Short in the third leg. And Jay Foreman, Foreman, having trailed we'll one Nathan to throw first. Now leads by Game two on. games to one. Right at the outset of this fourth leg, big breaking news for you from Sindelfing and Anik concerns. Aaron Monk, the former World Youth Champion, uh, won't be playing tonight. He's uh, basically mislaid his passport. 
The bizarre thing is, <laughs> oh, qualifying no. for this was six weeks ago. So he's effectively had six weeks or so to iron everything out. Get himself ready. He's suddenly discovered in the last 24 hours or so that he can't find his passport. All of which means, well, various spin-offs from this. Firstly, Robbie Green has a bye, and the big news for Robbie is that he can go back to the hotel and watch Liverpool play Chelsea. That, well. will, that will be his number one focus for this evening. Um, it also means that the match between Raymond Van Barneveld and Scott Dale, which, as Dan 16. said earlier, was due to be played in the last match of the afternoon session, will now be uh, the match that takes the place of Robbie Green, Aaron Monk. So that will be the fourth game on this evening. So just seven matches in the afternoon session uh, and the full quota tonight. It has been absolute carnage on the European Tour this month. You can't seem to go 15 minutes without a player withdrawing. That, that is a 16, quite stunning withdrawal from Aaron Monk. The nature of Monkey is irrepressible. It means we are denied uh, Kong versus Monkey. And also, it's a big helping hand for Robbie Green as far as Euro qualification I, I, is concerned. I believe that will put him into the play. I think he only needed to win one more game on the European Tour. 16. And that will count. So it's an extra 500 quid. So Absolutely. he is in the qualifying places as I understand it. Aspinall's looking at double eight. And now for double four for two apiece. 24. Just missing a few doubles, Aspinall, but we know he's going to come back. Foreman back on 181. Well, 101. Nathan, you require 8. Not the worst miss in the world. Yeah, a manner of sorts, but might not matter either way because Aspinall here looking at double 4. Are you sure to the full four play? Is. Nathan Aspinall. Yeah, use that, J to throw use that marker expertly there, Nathan Aspinall. Well, the first dart was a very good one, but the second dart was absolutely perfect. Just kissed off the barrel and into the double four there. It is two apiece. Foreman, of course, has the advantage of throwing first in this one. As they fight it out for a place in the second round to face Alan Norris, number 13 seed. He could do with a win this weekend as well. Not as far as, I mean, he should be safe enough as far as Euro qualification is concerned, but he's just had a wretched run of form in Europe of late as well. Numerous first round exits. 135. But yeah, Robbie Green at the moment, as things stand, he's below the top 32, but guaranteed 1,500 here, guaranteed 1,000 pounds next week, or sorry, next month as well in Hildesheim. Uh, that would see him, like you say, jump above the dotted line. But there are a cluster of other players just below mm. the dotted line at the moment as well, the likes of Andy Bolton, Brendan Dolan, uh, Johnny Clayton, also his participation as well. 85. Uh, this weekend might prove significant too. And Christo Reyes, yeah, guaranteed, guaranteed two thousand pounds more as well, courtesy of qualifying. Ninety-six. Yeah, we had the Euro and last night. Yeah, Euro qualifiers last night for this one and the next one. Just the host nation qualifiers for this one last night. So we've got six 100. Germans in action. Six of them. Six of them, including a few with a few names that we've not seen on the European tour before. Well, I was going to say that. If you count Robert Marianovich, he's Croatian, but he was born in Germany. He'll have support as well. That's effectively seven. Oh, Jay Foreman. Great dart. Double 12. Double six. Mm. 69. It appears these guys are basically having one good leg and then one poor leg each. And it's worked out where a great deal of... Oh 21. Dear. And that, so you well, 12. with his last dart, Nathan Aspinall has gone from being on a finish to not being on a finish by scoring a point. <laughs> Just takes the pressure off this. And there sure we go. Double play. six from Jay Foreman. Nathan to throw first. Three, two, up. Yeah, two breaks at the start and then three successive holds of throw. Aspinall playing catch-up once again. 81. It's a very difficult one to call though maybe one more break could prove decisive here Foreman also had two matches in qualifying it would be Andy 60. Jenkins 6-4 Luke Woodhouse 6-1 yeah neither of these guys qualified for Hildesheim so this will be their last shot on the European tour oh, as Aspinall oh, there we go oh, no. celebration oh, first 180 of the weekend you can make to wait five and, and a half legs for it <laughs> Mr. Aspen, enjoyed it. Yeah, certainly did. If he gets another one here, that should be leg over. Pardon the phrase. Some thought you'll do in the two dollar. Oh, 95. wrong treble. 
But 200 points ahead, you would feel relatively secure unless... Mm -hmm. Unless... You might just... Oh, oh, no, 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 Juan no, no, to start Every looking in the rearview mirror here. 45. It is a bogey number 165, so there's not a great deal of pressure, is it? Well, trouble 15 for tops. Oh, what a finish that is. Do you like that? 180 Even followed by 145 in six darts. Not so bad. Seven flag to throw first. Well, game on. Aspinall with a real notice of intent there with that. 145 check out following the 180, but maybe a 184 Foreman here. Oh. No stopping them now. Oh, by my reckoning, that was 12 perfect darts in sequence we had there. 180 Aspinall, 180 Foreman, 145 84. out Aspinall, 180 Foreman. Bad at all, gentlemen. In my absence, were we ever near a nine dart finish in Mulheim? Given, mm. given what happened given in Risa. In Risa, where we had double 12 miss three times, mm. uh, we didn't get as 60. close as that. No. Okay. Uh, that was my big concern. It was just gnawing away at me all weekend. What if I miss a nine dart finish? I mean, if <laughs> we'd finally seen one, I'd have just been congering around Germany for the last 60. five days, and it just comes straight here after celebrating the curse of Ross Smith being broken. Maybe this is the place. You know, the glass palast in Sindelfingen, and the uh, most used venue on the European tour. We've used it every year, including one year we had it twice. Yeah, Paul Nicholson, our commentator, co-commentator, once again this weekend. 59. Said to me this morning, he absolutely loved playing here. He was on stage this morning just having a throw as well. But it is, you can see the banks away to the left and to the right-hand side as well. They'll be full tomorrow night, we'd have thought. 97. It may well get busy this evening as well. Yeah, we were expecting... Something like 1,500 fans tonight, 3,000 or so tomorrow. 100. Well, once Jay again, it's 64. been a strong leg from Aspinall, followed by a weak leg. And Foreman's had a relatively weak one, followed by a strong one. And he's looking at double 16 now for 4 3. 32. And you know, they broke each other in the first two legs of this match, but since then it's just been hold after hold. And Aspinall's going to have to find another break somewhere. 95. Yeah, you require 32. Otherwise, Foreman's just going to be allowed to coast he's towards victory. Because that's a 16 data, and it is good a enough for 4-3. Yeah, Foreman hoping to make the most of his first European Tour appearance since July of 2014, when he went down 6-4 to Mark Dudbridge in the first round of the European Open. His solitary European Tour appearance to date as well. He's a... Uh, Regular on the Challenge Tour, 100. although he hasn't won on the Challenge Tour since June of 2014. Mm, yeah, just before that uh, Dusseldorf appearance, wasn't it? Didn't uh, collect his tour card in January 140. either. 140! So looking to make the most of this opportunity on the big stage. And so far, so good. He's two legs away from a place in the second round and that meeting 100. with Alan Norris tomorrow. He's breathing down Aspinall's neck here. 57. He came down for the treble 17. Had he hit it, it would have left him 170. If Foreman can fire in a couple of trebles, he'll get down to a finish. There's one of them. Oh, not that one. Not that one, Jay. But he is putting pressure on the Aspinall throw here. How can the young man respond to it? Two right on the top wire of the treble 20. And somehow, he's managed to batter his way through to the fat 20 there when it looked... Well, nigh on impossible with his, well, it's quite a chunky dart, a couple of them there. A nice little wall to bounce off into the treble. 100. And Maybe Foreman is down to a makeable finish. Aspinall, can he take out a big one? Oh, he could do. Ooh, he's already taken out the 145, very 90s. nearly the 144. But Foreman only needs one treble for a dart at the double for a 5-3 lead. Big moment in the game here. Stay in there for double 19. Can't do it. He knows his chance 44. may have gone, although Aspinall hasn't been totally 48. convincing in checking out today, apart from that 145, which certainly caught the eye. Double 16 then, Jordan and on we go, go four for apiece. Just can't get away from him first. at the moment. Aspinall is just hanging on to the coattails of Jay Foreman. 
Well, they're both averaging in the high 80s here, both hitting roughly one in three of their darts at double. It's nip and tuck this one. And you see, 86 plays 88. This is a chance now, though. Aspinall to get the break he wants. Oh, look at this. Is he striking just at the right time? Oh, he might be. He might be. A second 180 for Nathan Aspinall. Warman kicks off 45, 65. only follows it with a 60. There you see the checkout percentages exactly the same. Four out of 11. Aspinall. Big, big opportunity. He needs to follow up that 180. Two high ones. 60. An adjustment, but not good enough. Only 60. Still stolen the dart, still has a healthy lead. Gets this leg in the bag, 5-4, and then thrown for the match 100. on the very next leg. Good dart. Yeah, great stuff from Nathan Aspinall, leaves 130. So should, well, if he wants it, get a dart at the bullseye with one treble in his next visit. And he might not need, well, he's not going to need to because 26, oh. 26 for no, Jay Form and the wheels are coming off right at the wrong time. What a massive helping hand that is for Nathan Aspinall. Oh, that's uh, kiboshed it slightly, but he's still got plenty in hand here. 66 away. Ball or treble 10, you would think. I think that was for the balls. A bit scruffy, could have set it up a little bit better there, Nathan Aspinall. And Foreman, if he can pile in something <laughs> big here. Oh, if you oh, oh well, 40. had he been that last time, it might well have been a very different story here. But Aspinall, 62 for a 5-4 lead, and what a timely break that would be. Double 16 he wants then, and double 16 he gets. And look what it means to the 25-year-old. Playing in only his fourth European Tour event, and he's now one leg away. Oh, it's been a bit, leg, Nathan, bit scrappy and a bit first. ploddy at times, Game but there have just been little flashes of brilliance. Nathan Aspinall going 180, 145 out. That was to level it up at three apiece. And then a good strong leg there, 14 data, took out the 62, under 60. a bit of pressure to break when he knew he needed to do it. Game isn't won yet, though. He's got to close it out in this leg. And, oh, Jay Foreman. 68. Important last dart. Yeah, needed that, but it might not be enough if Aspinall... Well, this could turn the other way. Nothing can 44. be taken for granted here. Aspinall just seems to be a little bit nervy with the finishing line in sight. Foreman needs to jump all over this, though. And once again, he can't find a treble. Oh, this is going on with the final dart. Well, Aspinall is a man who's beaten Michael Smith, a player 80. of a very high caliber earlier this year, beat him in a Players' Championship event in July. He's had one or two notable results of late. And he has made the last 16 of a Euro Tour event before as well. But Foreman is not going anywhere just yet. He yeah. has an advantage. Aspinall needs to keep tabs on this. And so far he isn't. 93. I did all that good work in getting the break back. But as we've seen in this game, these players are having one good leg and then one pretty poor leg. And after four visits to the board, Nathan Aspinall is still 58. not on a finish. Foreman is down to 140. Now, Aspinall, this can be rescued, but he needs two trebles. That is a great-looking dart. Superb. Great stuff. Fill it up, Nathan. Oh, superb again. Under pressure, he's just found a little moment of brilliance, and it might, it might be enough to turn the game in his favour. Foreman's not going to take out the 140. So Aspinall, he's got the old Motown 60. shot, four Nathan tops. I imagine he'll probably go 12, double 16. For the match and a 6-4 win, Nathan Aspinall, 12, double 16 it is. Two match darts, Jeez. only needs shot. the one. And, and Nathan, Aspinall Nathan Aspinall sees it out, not without a little bit of worry, but... The World Youth Finalists will take on Alan Norris in the second round tomorrow. We've got seven games for you this afternoon following the sudden withdrawal of Aaron Monk. And it means that we get to see Robert Owen making his Euro Tour debut against Frosty the Throwman in just a few moments' time. But 25-year-old Nathan Aspinall from Stockport is safely through to round two. And Chuck Norris awaits. Erstes umkämpftes match here on the Bühne. The Freude war groß by the Asp. Mal hören, was er jetzt gleich dazu auch sagen wird. Nathan, congratulations. You looked happy after hitting the match, Dad. Yeah, 
no one likes playing first. Um, I'm a good mate for Jay. Um, but, you know, it was a good game and through to tomorrow now. Yeah. In Germany, we all remember you since uh, the World Youth Championship. <laughs> That was a nice day, wasn't it? It wasn't a nice day, um, but I'm, again, good mate with Max, yeah. and uh, yeah, hopefully they might cheer me now. <laughs> he beat me, so. <laughs> Alan Norris, he's your next opponent. Yeah. A tough, a tough one, sure. Yeah, very good player. Every time me and Alan play, we have uh, we have good games. Um, you know, go back now, prepare for tomorrow, and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Nathan Espinel.